your intent. But uh, I really have a need to kind of make my own choices here because I think it would be very hard for anybody else to really know what I need and I need this space to figure it out for myself. So uh, would you tell me what you heard me say, Mother, so I can see if I'm making myself clear. So now I know Mother didn't hear me. Now I know Mother didn't hear my needs. She probably heard a rejection. She probably heard that she's not valued. So but it's important that I not think that her reaction is because of what I said. If I express my feelings and needs, it would be impossible for a person to react this way if they heard it. They would have gotten a gift. They would have the eyes of a little child getting a gift from Santa Claus. That doesn't look like what mother's looking like right now. So. so mom, could you tell me what you just heard me say? You don't want me. So you heard it kind of as a rejection, mother. Of course, how else could I have heard it? Well, thank you for telling me you heard it as a rejection, mother. Uh, notice I didn't say, that isn't what I said. See, if you want to make it, if you want to have people understand you differently, Never tell them, you're misunderstanding me. Never say, that isn't what I said. Say, thank you for telling me that's what you heard. I can see I didn't make myself clear. I'd like to try again, Mother. As I do value very much your offering to help, but I have a need to kind of get my own needs clear and structure my own time. Can you tell me what you hear me say? So you think I don't have any intelligence about helping you. Thank you for telling me that's what you're hearing, Mother. It's, I, I'd, still, I'd like you to hear it differently. I'd like you just to hear my needs, that I have a real need to kind of sort things out for myself and structure my own time. Could you tell me what you heard? See, you have a need to kind of get clear for yourself what you want and to figure things out. Thank you, Mother. See how easy it is to get empathy from a jackal? Just about three ear pulls and I got it, right? <laughs> now there are some eight pull jackals too, I know. That. <laughs> but I can tell from how sweet you are, your mother is a three pull jackal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned earlier this morning that enjoying suffering. Could you yes. elaborate on oh, that? Oh, yes. That's, that's very important. Thank you for bringing back to me about it. Okay, a friend of yours says this to you. I'm a nothing. I'll never amount to anything. Look, at I'm an assistant clerk at age 45. And my brother's a head of his company. And my sister is a top attorney. And and I'm a nothing, okay? Now, to enjoy this person's suffering, we have to release ourselves from two kinds of responsibility. First, that we didn't cause the pain. And we want to release ourselves from that, especially when the other person is trying to make us believe we did cause the pain. See, so if this person had started, and you're at fault for all of this, why I'm a nothing? Especially when a person says that, we do not want to in any way think we cause this person's pain. Because you can't cause another person's psychological pain. Well, in this case, the person wasn't saying that, so that's pretty easy to in liberate ourselves from feeling responsible. But the second one is the hard one. To think we have to fix it. To make the person feel better. The more we think it's our job to make a person feel better, the more we're going to make it worse. Because you can't fix people. The good news is you don't have to. There is a very powerful healing energy always available if we don't block it. And how do we block that energy? By trying to fix things ourselves. So how do we help that energy do the job? by empathy. And empathy requires presence, just to be present. When we are just present, when we are remembering the Buddha's advice, don't do something, stand there. 
When we do that, and that energy works through us, there is a precious connection between that person and us. And that precious connection is what I mean by enjoying the pain, to enjoy that precious connection. And whether this person's feeling joy or pain, if we are present there with them, that's what I mean. But we block that beautiful energy whenever we step in and think we have to fix things. So if we say, oh, they're there, you'll feel better, it'll get over, we make it worse. When we start to give advice, we make it worse. So what does that look like? So you're feeling really discouraged and really would like to have achieved more in your life at this moment than you've done. Yes, yes, I've had every opportunity and look at me, I've just never made use of anything. You know, I, so you're really discouraged and frustrated and uh, would really have liked to have made different use of some things than you have. Yeah. See, I'm just present. I'm not trying to fix it. And when that happens, there's a very precious connection. That's what I mean by enjoying it. And that precious connection does the healing. Not your advice, not your whatever. Yes? Can you clarify the distinction between empathizing and sort of encouraging and supporting the soap opera of, you know, somebody who is, um, somebody who's suffering. And sometimes by being there, it's sort of a subtle encouragement as opposed to... Um, the subtle well, encouragement that I think you're talking about comes about when this person is talking about what happened to them for the 50th time. You've heard the story. So if I'm really listening to them, I don't hear what they talk about about the past. Because I know that the more they talk about the past, the less healing will take place. Right. So I interrupt. Mm -hmm. But I interrupt to bring the conversation to life. They're talking about the past, and I interrupt and I say, excuse me, but it sounds like right now you're still feeling hurt because your need for respect wasn't met in that. See, because just letting them talk about the past and asking them questions about what happened about the past is to just keep the soap opera going. So I interrupt when they talk about the past because we don't heal by talking about the past. We heal by talking about what's alive in us right now, stimulated by the past. But it's what's here now. And when I connect at that level, they won't keep talking about it. They'll heal. Last question, and then I'm going to get into uh, the subject that I'd like to cover before the end. Yes. Um, I, you talk about um, having, uh, let's see, that someone else cannot cause our emotional pain. That's right. And I think about the, the abuse that I grew up with and that I see in, in yes. a lot of families yes. and, and the suffering that I've yes. experienced throughout my life yes. and through my recovery and all that. And, and yes, and other people were a stimulus for your suffering. And you were a participant by how you dealt with it. Uh -huh. for, for example, if you followed me in my work, you would see this very clearly. Uh, in places like Rwanda, Burundi, uh, Sierra Leone, I'm working with people that have had their families killed. Some of those people have such rage that all they live for, moment by moment, is the possibility of vengeance. Others have no anger, have never had anger. Same exact stimulus. They have deep feelings. 